funny. Every now and again, when we're getting, when Pastor Joe and I are getting ready for messages, you know, was, he'll say, what are you preaching on? I said, well, you know, we let each other know what we're preaching on. And uh, so the last, you know, we've been preaching on spiritual warfare the last couple of weeks. And uh, anybody that knows anything about pastoring or preaching, when you preach on something, you better be ready to deal with it. And so I, everything, every single thing I thought about it that I preached to you last week, I have had to walk out this week. Sometimes it don't always happen. Sometimes you can get away with one. You know, like, oh, I slipped that one by. I didn't, you know, I didn't get attacked. But man, this week it just come. And I'm not talking about anything political. I'm talking about personal. I'm talking about physical. I'm talking about spiritual. I'm talking about emotionally. Just, and so the three things, remember the three things I told you last week that we have to do? Weapons of mass destruction is what I talked about that we have. I had to use every single one of them a couple of days all day. I had to remind the enemy of what God's word says. I had to resist the devil. I mean, we talked about that. We got to mind, we got to resist and remove any doubt that I'm where I'm, you know, I just find that whole thing. So I had to do that all week. And I thought, okay, okay, enough is enough. Amen. God is good. So I got a safe sermon this week. Amen. <laughs> I pray I do anyway. Thank you, Jesus. I was like, Lord. I went to Galatians, and I started reading some of that stuff about wolf. I thought, nope, not today, devil. We're going to go to, to something, some, some good stuff. Amen? It's all good, but, you know, just something that's going to get me through the week. Amen? Anyway, we're going to Galatians tonight. That's where we're at in our route, and uh, it's going to be awesome. Amen? God is good, God is faithful. As Pastor Darrell said, we're not going to give the enemy any place in this, in this room and in our services. Galatians chapter 4 is where we're going to go. Again, this, this is a rich book. Galatians is, man, it's full. I did a whole series on Galatians a couple of years ago. I went through every chapter, 1 through 6. That's actually where I kind of got this message from. I was like, oh, where's that series at? I'm looking through my office. I found it. I thought, oh, here's a good one, right? Here, so Galatians chapter 4, I went to Galatians chapter 3, that's one of my favorites there, and I thought, nope, can't do that. So Galatians chapter 4, verse 1 through 7, look at what it says, the Apostle Paul is preaching, teaching here to the church at Galatia, and uh, he says to them this, he says, now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, does not differ at all from a slave, though he is master of all but is under guardians and stewards until the time appointed by the Father. Even so, we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem, say redeem, to redeem those who were under the law that we might receive the adoption, say adoption, as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. You are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. Father, we love you tonight. Thank you for this word. Anoint us now to receive what you have for us in this hour. We praise you. For it now, in Jesus' name. You know, nothing says love like adoption. Nothing says love like adoption. Definition of adoption is this. The act of taking something as your own. The act of taking something as your own. Adoption, it actually comes from an, from an old French word that means to choose for oneself. To choose for yourself. Paul here, the Apostle Paul here, like I said, he's writing Galatia here. Galatians, he's in the middle of his letter to the Galatia people. He's still trying to convince them, if you read that, he's still trying to convince the people here that Jesus is enough. They're thinking we still got to do that law, and we still got to fulfill all these laws and these rituals, but he's still here trying to convince them Jesus is enough. He took care of it all. He died for them. He, they just needed to accept that. They needed to walk in the spirit of that, walk in the grace of that. So he's desperately 
trying to convince them that they don't, they don't have to earn his love. There's nothing they can do to earn it. They can't earn his favor by, by obeying these old Jewish laws. He's trying to teach them that. He's still trying to teach them this is a new law. This is a new covenant, a law of grace, a, a law of freedom. So Paul begins to use this illustration, if you will, of servanthood, of being a slave, being a servant, to show that before Jesus came and died, people were in bondage to the law. So he's trying to break it down for them, give them an illustration. The people were enslaved by trying to keep the law, but never being able to, because nobody could ever be good enough. Nobody could, could get it all right. And so he knew that. He says, you're going to exhaust yourself trying to get this thing right. But the good news that Paul brings them here is this, that those who were once slaves to the law, they're now set free. They're now set free. Galatians is a lot about freedom. He said they were slaves, they were servants, but now they're sons. You were a servant, but now you're a, ser a son. Servants back in the day, back in that day, they would go before their owner with fear and trembling. With fear and trembling, they would go afraid for their very life. So Paul makes this statement in verse 7 there. He makes it personal. He says, look, you are, you are no longer a servant, but you're a son. You're a son. That means you're, you're an heir of God through Christ Jesus. You have received the adoption, the adoption of sons. Now, I myself, I, I can't. I can't even think about adoption agencies and, and foster homes and things like that. Uh, when, when I think about children, when I think about the hundreds, thousands of children out there that have nobody, and then I'm going to get emotional again, but have nobody. They have nobody to love them. Nobody, you think about your own kids and how much you love them. And you take, and how, oh gosh, help me but how you take care of them. So when I think about the thousands of, of babies and children that are out there that have nobody, nobody to hug them, nobody to love them, nobody to tuck them in at night, that's heartbreaking. That's heartbreaking to me. I have a hard time even, and some of you can't, I, have, I can't go to a pet store. I can't go to an animal shelter. Y'all know I, I can't, I can't, it's just heartbreaking to me because you just want to take all of them home with you. I know, uh, you know, and, and all of us could say, well, you know, any of us in this room, we could leave and say, you know what, I'm going to go adopt a pet and I'm going to go buy the pet and I'm going to get one. We could, a lot of us even could go maybe to an adopt, adoption agency and say, hey, I just feel God's leading me to do this and, and take a, get a child and take that child home and give it an amazing home and raise that child. We could probably all do that. But what's heartbreaking to me, and we've done this. I remember when our kids were small, we'd go get pets. We'd go to the animal shelter. I'd go somewhere and get them a pet. But it wasn't, you know, we'd pick out the cutest. You know, you always want to pick out the cutest one and uh, get them and take them home, the furriest one or whatever, and you get them home. But what's heartbreaking is not that. It's the ones you leave behind. It's the ones you leave behind. That's what's heartbreaking. That's what hearts, what's heartbreaking when you do that. The pitiful looks on their face. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Pitiful looks on their face. I'm so thankful. When I think about it, I'm so thankful that we serve a God that chose us all. Amen. He chose every single one of us. He chose us. He adopted us. Not, not because we were the cutest one or we had the saddest, most pitiful eyes but because he loves us, because he loves us, not anything that we've done, not because we were really good at something or not good at something. Like I said, just because he loved us, the great I am God, the holy of holies. He chose to adopt me and to adopt you, to love me, to hold me, to take care of me, to be there when I needed him, to, to love the unlovable to wrap his arms around me, to promise to never leave me, never forsake me, to adopt me and take me as his own. Aren't you glad tonight that you've been adopted into the family of God, into the family of God that he chose you to take you as his own son, as his own daughter, to make you an heir to all that he has. And he gives you the power, gives you the authority to call him Abba, Father.
Abba Father. Abba, see, Abba is another word. It's a word only found in the New Testament. It's actually an Aramaic word. It's actually a word that means father. That means father. Aramaic, that's a, a language that Jesus spoke. And Abba is a very intimate word, if you will, very intimate word that a son would use to address his father. Son or daughter would use to address their father. In Jewish history, or in, in this time, a slave or a servant, they were not permitted to say the word Abba or Abba, Abba Father. They were not permitted to even say the word. So that's why the Apostle Paul says in Romans, he said, we do not have the spirit of bondage, but the spirit of adoption. Therefore, we can cry Abba Father. Because we're no longer a servant, we're a son, so we can cry, Abba, Father. We can say, we can call Abba, Father, because we have that personal, intimate relationship with him. Have that relationship with him. God was actually never even referred to as Father until Jesus came to earth. Until Jesus came to earth in the New Testament. The Old Testament, if you notice, and we, you know, we studied the whole Old Testament, the Old Testament is constantly pointing to Jesus, pointing to Jesus. We talked about that in the Old Testament. You know, the Messiah, the Savior, the Lamb of God, the Ram, caught in the thicket, the line of Jesus, constantly pointing to Jesus. Then Jesus comes. As soon as Jesus is old enough to speak, what does he do? He starts pointing to the Father. He starts pointing to the Father. He says things like, don't worry about what you're going to eat, what you're going to drink. He says, because your heavenly Father, your heavenly Father knows what you need, has need of all things, and he'll take care of that need. He says, if you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father, will your Father who is in heaven give things to you that ask? He says, when you pray, pray this, our Father, which art in heaven, amen. Jesus wants us always to have this image of God in our mind that he is your Abba Father. He is your Abba Father. Why? Because he wants you to know there's nothing. Is there anything in this, in this room, if you've got children, is there anything more important? There's nothing. There's nothing more important. That election, that there's nothing more important than your children. That's your heart. That's your heart. That's your heart right there. There's nothing. God, Jesus wanted us to know that. There's nothing, God, there's nothing more important than you, than you. Amen? Amen. I'm going to skip that page right there. We're going to talk about adoption. I'm going to get us out here. I'm going to get us out of here. I always get y'all out early, but I'm going to get y'all early tonight. Talk about adoption. Four things about adoption that we want to talk about tonight. Um, the first thing about adoption is this. Adoption is costly. Adoption is costly. Galatians 4, 4 through 5 says that. Let me read it again. It says, but when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption as sons. To redeem means to obtain or to set free by paying a price. Set free by paying a price. A very high price was paid for our redemption. For us to be adopted, there was a high price, a, a high price that was paid. Adoption is costly. In Galatians chapter 3, you'll see it says, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us because it says, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. There was a huge cost involved. There's a huge cost involved today in adopting children. You go out to do that, it's a huge cost, while a lot of people are not able to do it. Uh, financially, emotionally, there's a huge cost. There's cost of your time, there's stress, you know, there's a lot of worry that is just unbelievable, the worry that is there. Uh, and since you never stop, y'all know this, you never stop being a parent, the stress is always there, and the stress can be great. The stress can be great. So much of an emotional roller coaster is involved with adoption. And, and you know that. You've heard about that. The fear of birth parents returning and things happening. They could be taken away. You've always got that 
uh, dealing with the children there because a lot of times there's difficult circumstances that you got the child from. So dealing with that. But the price, the price that God paid, the price that was paid for our adoption is far greater than anything we've ever seen in this world. It was the life of his son. It was the life of his son. So the first thing we realize about adoption is it costs something. The second thing about adoption we need to know, adoption gives children the right of being heirs to the father. The right of being heirs. Because the fact that you've been adopted into the family of God, you've been, you now have benefits, you now have right, you have an inheritance, you're part of the family. Just, just like you, a child with a parent, anything that belongs to the parent belongs to you. Amen? Anything belong? Your parents have money. You have money. You should anyway. Amen? Unless they hold out on you. Parents have food. You got food. Amen? Parents have a nice house. You have a nice Parents have love. Then you have love. As an adoptive child, you are entitled to everything that a parent has. You are entitled to that, including an inheritance. I know people that have adopted children that have to go and re rewrite their will because they have to write that adopted child in there because, you know, it's several years, and they're like, man, i got to write them in because I've adopted them. And I thought about this. I thought about this, that every time a new convert comes to the Lord, every time someone accepts Jesus, Jesus has to, Jesus, ha we become part of the family of God, and God has to rewrite us in his will so to speak. He has to go and write our names down. Say, oh, you've heard it. Your name is, we've sing a song. Your name is written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. He has to go and say, oh, i got to add their name. Donna, she just accepted me. She's now part of the family of God. i got to go and include her name because she now gets an inheritance. Amen? She now gets some benefits. She now, there's some things that she's kind of, she's entitled to now because she's part of the family of God. She now gets life instead of death. Amen? She now gets a home in heaven. She now gets unspeakable joy. She now gets a life free from pain and agony in eternity. She's got an inheritance now that's just going to blow her away because she now belongs to me. She belongs to the Father. i got to put her name now on my list to get the blessings of God that we talk about so much and we sing about. She's entitled now. You're entitled now to the blessings of God. Isn't that an awesome thought? Isn't that an awesome thought? I love that. The third thing about adoption is this. Adoption is usually something that's well thought out and well planned. It's something that's thought out and it's something that's planned. Ephesians 1, 4 through 6, it tells us this. It says that God chose us before the foundation of the world. Before the foundation. He predestined us for adoption as sons through Jesus Christ. Okay? So he chose us from the beginning. He predestined us to be adopted as sons through Jesus Christ. So I want you to understand this. Adoption in God's mind was not plan B. It was not plan B. He predestined us for adoption from the beginning of creation. I don't think the fall of man shot God. I don't think that he was shocked by that when man fell and there was sin. And I don't think he scrambled around and said, oh, i got to come up with another plan now. That plan didn't work. I know. I think he had a plan all along. He knew that man would fall. I think he knew that. He knew that they would need a Savior. He knew that they would need a Redeemer. So he planned it all out. There was the creation. There was the fall. There was redemption. And then there was adoption. It was always in the plan. It was not second best. It was not plan a lot of times you got young married couples. They get married, and we all know couples. They get married, and they plan, you know, to be married a couple of years, have a couple of kids, and for some reason, you know, they're not able to have those kids, or health reasons or whatever it may be. Uh, they're not able to have those kids. So plan A was to have kids. When they're not able to, they go to plan B. And say, so, well, okay, then we're going to adopt. We're going to just adopt. So that's what we're going to do. So they do it. They adopt the baby. They make the child part of their family. They love them. They give them a place to live. They include them in their, go change their will, give them, put them in the family, you know, Bible and the family tree, add their name, buy them a stock and hang them. Y'all know the whole thing. They're part of the family. Now, that's, a, that's amazing. It ends up being the best thing that ever happened to the family. 
It's just an amazing thing. But God planned it all along. This was not plan B for God. He planned it all along to make a way to pay the price. He had it planned. He had it thought out. You were not a second thought. It was not that. He chose you. He saw you. He loved you. The Bible says while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He knows us. He loves us. We are his. We belong to him. All that he has belongs to you. Amen? Because you've been adopted. You're not fatherless. You're not homeless. You're not helpless. Amen? You have a father. You're a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a child of God, called out, separated, set apart for such a time as this. And guess what? Your father owns it all. He owns it all. Amen? Amen. Last thing, number four, adoption. Adoption is often from bad situations. Adoption is often times from bad situations. I've told you this testimony before. Uh, it's been about 13 years ago now, 12, 13 years ago now. Uh, Pastor Darrell and I were at our house. We had just started Central, just a couple of years old. And uh, we would say it was Christmas time. We were doing a Christmas outreach, actually. And uh, a young lady from DFAX calls and... Uh, she says, is this Donna Allen? Yes, it is. She says, uh, I've got two babies here. She says, I'm in Greene County. There's a women's shelter there. And uh, she says, I've got two babies. One is six weeks old. One is 18 months old. She said, and they are your, like, third cousins or something. And I said, okay. She said, uh, they're going to be turned over to state custody tomorrow, but your name has been given. Someone, had the, the mother of the babies has given us your name and uh, she thought that you and your husband might be able to provide them with a safe place, a safe house, I think is what they call it, a safe place for them to stay, to keep them from going to interstate custody. And of course she told me the parents and I thought, oh yeah, I know them. And uh, I turned to Pastor Darrell, I said, we got to go get two babies. He said, okay, what, 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 and I, how does that look? And I said, well, it don't look good. <laughs> but uh, she, uh, we, we take off down there. And uh, it, was, it was, like I said, it was, a lot of times adoptions are from, from bad circumstances. Uh, the parents, of course, drug addicted, both of them. Uh, just terrible, terrible situation. And um, so we take off to Greene County to go get these babies. Our kids at this particular time, Daniel and Dalen, Dalen was, I think, 16, maybe, I think 16. Did I write down how she was? Dalen was about 16. I think Daniel was 18 or 19 years old. So they're still at home, and they're just giving us fits, you know, <laughs> at this particular time. And uh, so here we go to get two more, you know. <laughs> and... Uh, so we take off down there. It was a long drive down there. It was that afternoon, like I say, it was Christmas time. And uh, we go down and we get the babies. We bring them back home. We had no idea. We didn't have nothing. And then when she handed us those little babies, y'all, they, uh, <sighs> this is so much harder than I thought. I thought it was going to be easy. I think the last time I preached this message, I didn't have grandkids, Tracy, so it was, it was easier. <laughs> Y'all, if this is your first time ever on a Wednesday night, <laughs> and somebody said, you got to come here, Pastor Donna, she does the best job. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is different. But we went down to get uh, those babies and uh, put them in the car. I think they had a, some kind of car seat, you know, there in a little bag, you know, like you bring a couple of canned goods home in. That's all they had. All they had to their name.
so we uh, we bring them home, and uh, our kids are there, and we had them for a couple of days. Uh, both of the babies were drug addicted, and uh, we didn't know that. We just thought they're just cr- they're criers or colicky or whatever, you know. So we didn't find that out until later. But we had them a couple of days, and we had to come to church one day. And so I called some of the grandparents, the actual grandparents. Well, my grandparents would have been their great grandparents. They were in their 80s, and I said, "Look, can y'all just keep them? We've got to go to church. You know, we got church service." So I took them by there, and we actually ran into uh, ran into a restaurant to grab something to eat. We ran into a young lady there that. Uh, we knew from years ago and uh, she had actually adopted two or three kids that we knew of is this crazy or what we're we're like what are we gonna do with these babies you know we've got kids around we got a new church we are never home we have got our hands full it's just overwhelming what we're dealing with and um we ran into this girl i didn't think a thing about it talked to her spoke to her come on to church had a church service we go back home and that night we're there, and I woke up in the middle of the night, and the Lord said, call her, this, this girl. He says, call her. And I'm thinking, okay. So I don't even know if I told Pastor Darrell, but the next day I called the young lady because I said, look, I just need some advice. I've got two babies, a six-week-old, an 18-month-old. They don't have anywhere to go. We, we are not in a place where we can t- t- take on this type of responsibility. You can imagine. I said, we just can't do this at this particular time. I said, do you have any advice for me? What can I do? How do I, they don't have, you know, they don't have anything. And uh, she says, oh, you know, she asked me about sweet, sweet lady. She asked me about it. And I told her a few things about it. And she says, well, let me check around and I'll call you back. I got a couple of contacts, some really great people, some great, you know, homes or whatever. And uh, I'm telling y'all, it wasn't an hour later this lady calls me back and she says Donna and I said yes she said can we meet can I meet you somewhere and I said yeah absolutely she says uh my friend there's a friend of mine she and her husband and also me and my husband you know we have adopted a couple of kids and we are interested in 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 the babies I hate to, to say it like that and I said okay yeah and so we actually meet up with them and they hold the babies, and they just, they just got, this just takes a special person to, to do something like this. And there's a connection, and she, I don't even, I, th- I think within days, within a couple of days, we're like meeting with the, the defects lady. These women are like, we want to take these babies. We want to take these babies. Uh, this past week on Facebook, I think it was two weeks ago, Sonia, that's the, the lady, the, one of the ladies that got the, the baby, the six-week-old. She posted on Facebook. She says, happy birthday, Chrislyn. Happy 13th birthday. And that was the baby's name, Chrislyn, the 16, uh, I mean, the uh, six-week-old baby girl. They got a beautiful home, loving parents that love them, that have raised them since they were born, took them in. They spent that Christmas, those babies spent that Christmas having everything you can ever imagine, being taken care of, being taken, you know, talked to them a lot, taken, getting all the medical attention they needed. Beautiful, beautiful, y'all, the Dolly, you know, Carmen, the, the oldest girl, beautiful young ladies, just were given a beautiful life love Jesus or taken to church they know the Lord being raised in church godly homes God has done that for us he has done that for us he, he has done that for us we've, we've got a lady Aunt, Aunt Andrea come up here sweet come up here can I have that microphone you're not going to talk much We've got a lady here. And uh, I want you to tell, 
I didn't tell her. I just said, are you going to be here tonight? She says, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> isn't she beautiful? Squall along with you. Squall, good. <laughs> so now we're both squalling. Good night. But she is, she's here in our church, and a lot of you may not know her, but uh, if you do, you know that she's got like 10 kids. <laughs> so I just want you to tell us, just tell us a little bit about your family, how many kids you have, you and your husband. Yeah. Um, I, we have four biological okay. kids, yeah. and then we've adopted four kids, um, two girls and two boys. The two boys are actually biological brothers. Um, and then we foster, so Lord only knows how many we're going to have every time we come in. <laughs> uh, right now we just have three. Mm-hmm. Um, tonight I brought three. Um, I have two full-time that live with us, so um, fostering is definitely our passion. The Lord definitely weighed that on our hearts many, many years ago. So, um, yeah. So and you've like adopted said, four. Mm-hmm. Adopted four. four of them. And how old were they when you um, got them? Lexi was five weeks old when we got her. Wow. Maddie was three. Um, Tyler, he was a baby, baby. Mm-hmm. We started bringing him uh-huh. here. Yeah. Um, and he's now four. And then Tate, I brought him home from the NICU. So he oh, was mine wow. from, he was mine from day one. Yeah. The minute awesome. he was born. So, awesome. Yeah. That is awesome. Yeah. So what I was saying, adoption is costly. Is that true? That is true. It, a lot of times comes from bad circumstances. <laughs> Absolutely. That's true. Yes, very true. Very and true. I forgot the other two, but everything I said yeah, was true. Everything That's I said was true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Everything is true. But it's so mm. worth it. Oh, man. Every bit of it is so worth it. The money, the time, the crying, yeah. the praying. Yeah. It's all worth it. It's Amen. been very, very worth it. And so what I wanted y'all to see, I wanted y'all to see this heart. Yeah. <laughs> this heart. <laughs> And, 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 and this is us, y'all. We're talking Absolutely. about God. Yeah. We're talking Absolutely. about the love of God. How much more does he love us? That's what he's done for us. Yes. Absolutely. That's what, if we can just understand that, that's what he's done in a crazy, messed up world. Absolutely. With so much going on. Gosh, let's just think about what really means something to us tonight. Amen. Yes. Amen. What really means something to us. Amen. Thank you so much. You. Appreciate that. Y'all give her a hand. Amen. Thank you. Y'all stand up. Y'all stand up with me tonight. I just wanted to uh, talk about that tonight. And I think about what a great God we serve. What a mighty God that we serve. He's made us an heir. Everything that is his is ours. Everything that is his is ours. All the blessings, all the promises, all the benefits. All the benefits, the joy, the peace, the happiness. It's not wrapped up in what we think it is. It's not wrapped up. What, what's going on in our nation today? Hey, it's going to be in four more years. It's going to be going on again. And everybody's going to be saying, this is the biggest one ever. This is the most important one ever. No, this, this is what's important. The family of God. We've been adopted into the family of God. We belong to the Father. Amen. You can call him. You can call him Abba, Father. He is Lord. He is Savior. All of that great stuff that we call him and we exalt him. But the greatest thing is you can say, Abba, Father. It's the most intimate thing you could ever say to God. Amen. Father, we love you tonight. I thank you for your goodness, your grace, your mercy. And I thank you, Lord, that we have access to you that you love us, you've adopted us into your family. Lord, you've taken us in. Lord, you've given us a home in heaven. You've brought us comfort, you've brought us joy, you've brought us peace. We thank you for that, Lord, and you've given us a beautiful family of brothers and sisters. Lord, help us not to take that for granted. Help us to embrace that and love that. Father, as we leave this place tonight, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name, that you would go with us everywhere we go. Father, you would guard our hearts, guard our tongues, Father, as we leave this place, Lord, that things that we say would bring glory and honor to your name. And we praise you for that now, in Jesus' name.